morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning yoga practice. So we're going to start in a comfortable seated position while you're getting settled. I'm going to read our waiver. For me today, comfortable will be in hero's pose, or in some of our yoga traditions, they call this the pose of the sage. Um, I'm going to be sitting on a couple blocks to start. You're welcome to sit on a little cushion. Meditation cushion if you have one, the pillow, a blanket, walker book. In order to make these classes as freely accessible as possible to our participants, we will be using a verbal warning and assumption of risk at the beginning of each class. Participation in this online class is voluntary. Physical activity programs may result in injury, and by participating, you assume the risk of injury that may result from your participation. We strongly recommend that you participate from a space that is suitable for this activity. For example, making sure that you have moved nearby furniture and other potential hazards. If you are participating in a yoga class or a class that involves lying on the ground, we recommend using a mat, or if you don't have one, a carpeted area. Participants are encouraged if they experience pain or injury to seek medical attention or advice and care as needed. William & Mary Health & Wellness strongly recommends that each participant have an annual physical exam and follow the advice of your health care provider before participating. So again, welcome everyone. So the focus of our practice today is going to be the health and wellness of our spine. So all of our moves will all have some sort of interaction with the spine. So as you are ready to just start to settle into the space, we're going to start by drawing awareness to the spine. Noticing it within the center of the body. In yoga, we define it as the center of our physical body. Noticing the space in front, an anterior side. Notice the posterior, the back side. And it's the right and the left. And then notice above and below. In anatomy, they would say we have six degrees of movement of the spine. But in yoga, we actually talk about eight degrees of movement. There's flexion and extension, forwards and backwards. There's right and left, lateral movements. We have twisting right and left. And a lot of times in yoga, you'll hear us talk about extending the spine, reaching the spine up and below. So just drawing your awareness momentarily for those movements as we move through class today, we'll be exploring all of them. Then begin drawing your awareness out from the spine to the rest of the body. Let it tell you what's going on this morning. And then draw your awareness to your breath. Just noticing the natural rhythm of breath this morning. Depending upon where you are. Maybe cool or warm as you breathe in. Might be a lot of pollens or residue, so it might be sticky or smooth. Notice as you breathe out. Notice the pauses, the top of the inhale and the bottom of the exhale. And 
And take a moment while you're in just this natural rhythm of breath. You're not doing anything to change it now. Just notice what's going on in the mind space. Allow yourself to just be in this present moment with this full awareness of your breath and your physical body. Allowing yourself to be the observer of you. As thoughts pass through, allowing them to just be like, oh, maybe a leaf on the river, moving past. And then come back to your breath. Take a moment to explore the breath by deepening the inhales, lengthening the exhale. Maybe adding a count in if you'd like as you explore, maybe starting at a count of three, two, one. Pausing in those moments of breathless, if that feels right for you. Each time adding on. Building up your breath until you come to that deepest inhale, that longest moment in pause, that longest exhale, that second longest moment in pause. And then make your way into a rhythm of breath that just feels right for you today for practice. There's no right or wrong to this, but just take a rhythm of breath that just feels good for you in this moment. Then, as you're ready, preparing for movement, if you are in Sukhasana or Easy Pose, you're going to switch out the legs. If you're in Varasana or the Pose of the Sage and you want to shift away some props, you're welcome to. Bringing hands to heart center, setting intention for practice this morning. A sankalpa, positive statement. Letting that statement fill the heart space. And then on an exhale, letting it go out into the room and then the universe. Releasing the hands to the side, drawing awareness to the spine. Start to lengthen that spine. Draw the crown of the head towards the ceiling. On an inhale, lift the arms up and overhead. Maybe take the gaze up if that feels right. Draw the hands through the heart center. We'll do that two more times, lengthening the spine with your breath lifting. Lengthening, holding the length as you draw hands through to heart center. Last time, lifting, hands through, pause. Releasing the hands along the side, we'll add on from here. Reaching, turning the palms to the front now and just allow yourself to hinge forward, long side. Placing the hands on the floor, maybe bowing a little deeper if that feels right to you, starting to draw the third eye down towards the mat. Inhaling, using the core engagement, lengthen the spine to hold that up. Hands through to heart center. Two more rounds here, lifting up and coming forward with your breath. As the palms come down, maybe the crown of the head reaches now down towards the mat and then inhaling, coming back up. Last round at your pace, lengthening the spine, finding that beautiful flexion of the spine.
As you make your way back to hands at heart center, just pausing. And then adding on to here, we're going to release the hands along the side, lift the arms up and overhead, come forward for that flexion. And then as we inhale back up, if it feels right to draw the hands together and put a little extension, a little back bend in, come back to neutral before you release the hands down along the side. We'll move through that two more times. Know you always have the option to go where you need to go. So if it feels right to just come into that extension and pause, you're welcome to go there also. Remembering for most of us, it's still early in the morning, last round. So be kind and gentle as the body wakes up. Pausing in center. And then from here, removing any crops, we're gonna make our way to tabletop. As we change shape each time moving through our movement, allowing us this ability to explore as the body begins to open up. So taking some time here to get your tabletop set up. Make sure you have the weight kind of equally distributed between the hands and the shins here. Externally rotate the shoulders so you get that nice broadening of the chest and take the gaze down to the mat. So you're getting that axial extension of the spine, reaching the crown of the head now towards the top of the mat, reaching the tailbone towards the bottom of the mat. Noticing that front and back side of the body, supporting, notice the right and left side. And then from here, beginning some movement of the spine, allowing the navel to Draw down towards the mat as the gaze comes up. And then that rounding of the back, tucking the chin, tucking the tailbone. Moving through cow and cat at your pace. And again, any organic movement here. If the side bodies are asking for some movement, maybe bumping hips out as you move through cat and cow. Adding in that little bit of lateral movement. Starting to notice the spine's connection to the other parts of the body. And then pausing back in center here. Taking a moment or an opportunity to flip the palms if that feels right to you, drawing hands to center, maybe making some fists, maybe still even adding in a little movement here, a little lateral movement of the spine. And then coming back onto the tops of the palm, we're gonna draw the big toes together and sweep the hips towards the heels. Finding our first child's pose of practice. Maybe noticing today in this pose of the child. Now as we added in a little bit of that flexion and extension in our breath work at the beginning of class, maybe the pose is a little more accessible this morning. Options with the hands to reach them out in front or coming into traditional velocity with the hands along the side of the body, palm space and back. If you'd like a little more wrist release, drawing the tops of the hands along the side of the body, hugging the elbows in. Third eye is either on the mat, or it can be resting on a blanket or a soft prop, protecting that cervical spine. Noticing the movement of the spine here. Noticing the spaces that 
or maybe asking for a little more love in the spaces that are like, yeah, I love this. And then wherever the hands are at, you're going to reach them out in front. You're going to make your way back up to that tabletop. Take the opportunity to set it up, getting that weight equally distributed. And then drawing awareness into the left leg. You're going to extend the left leg long on the mat. All five toes are going to be touching the mat. Hip point is pointing down to the mat. Hips are nice and even here. Notice that core engagement. Then from here, mindfully pushing through that heel, you're just going to gently lift the leg up about six inches. You're keeping that hip point pointed down. So just notice if it feels like the hip is turning out, bring it back in. From here, adding on, if you'd like, reaching the right arm out in front. You can have that thumb pointed up, or maybe today you want to make a bit of a fist with the hand. Maybe playing with the placement of where the knuckles point. Noticing it within the spine. Keeping that upper back involved as well as the core. We're obviously going to pause here for a moment. Breathing in and out, building strength. And then mindfully with awareness, bringing the right hand back down, the left knee down. Take a cat and a cow here, and if you need to flip the palms to release them, go ahead and go there. As we make our way to the other side, we're going to take the right leg long on the mat. All five toes pointed down. Same thing here, keeping that hip point turned down towards the mat, lifting that leg up, push through the heel so you've got a flexion in the foot. Then, left hand out long. Thumb can be pointed up, or if you want to try that fist on this side too, noticing how that changes the dimension of the back. Finding that space for you as you pause here and hold. Maybe noticing the subtle differences, right versus left. And then as you're ready, left hand to the mat, right knee to the mat. Take that cat and cow. Then from this space, we're going to add in a little bit more dynamic movement of some spinal flossing. So similar to our cat and cow, but we're just going to take some alternate directions here. So, as you lower the navel down towards the mat, you're going to actually tuck the chin here. And then, as you round the back, you're going to lift the gaze, alternating the direction. Giving the nerves in the back a little bit of exercise themselves this morning. Keeping them nice and healthy. One more round here. Navel down, chin tucked. And then gaze up, tailbone tucked, rounding the back. I know it feels a little odd because it's not our normal movement. Then from here, pausing back in that mountain, you may want to step the hands just one maybe hand length in front as we add in a little bit more movement here. <coughs> So from here, we're just going to roll the hips forward, taking the gaze up, 
And then moving back almost into that child's pose, drawing up and forward. Making it a rhythm for you, allowing yourself to even explore the spine as so you just floss through. After a few rounds, if it feels right, when you come forward to lift the feet off the floor, drawing the feet back, the heels back almost towards the head, go ahead and add that in. We're gonna take a few more rounds here, really opening up, waking up that spine. And then, as you're ready, making your way to a wide leg, child's pose here, a little more active with the arms out in front, pausing. Then reaching the arms out, tucking the toes, lifting the hips, find your first downward dog of practice. Maybe noticing as we spend a good amount of time opening up that posterior chain through the spine. Allow yourself organic movement here, coming up on the toes, walking the dog. And then making your way mindfully to the top of the mat. If you're ready to hop, go ahead and go there. Otherwise, walk. Finding that forward fold. Allowing yourself the opportunity here to rest the abs on the quads. Maybe the chest joins. Shake the head yes and no here, releasing any tension. Maybe holding on to opposite elbows, rocking side to side. If it feels right to start straightening the legs out, go ahead and go there. Keeping the abs and the quads together. And then tracing the hands up the shin. On that tabletop back. Exhale, release. Bring the hands to heart center on the lay mudra. You're going to press into the feet, long spine. Bend the knees, use the core to come up. Pausing here in Samasthiti, hands at heart center. Then releasing the palms down along the side of the body, allowing yourself to set up your mountain pose. If it feels right to lift the feet off the mat, drawing them back down, finding that place that feels natural for you. Lifting the spine up. On an inhale, reach the arms up and overhead. Take the gaze up. Bring the palms together and find that baby back when standing, pushing the hips forward. Let the gaze maybe start to come up towards the ceiling. Coming back to neutral, you're going to find steeple mudra, interlacing all the fingers except the index. And then just start rocking side to side, finding that lateral movement. If you'd like to make this more of a balance challenge, allow yourself to start to heel toe the feet together. If you want to pause on one side, you're welcome to. Just be equal opportunity to the right and the left side. So if you pause on one side, try and pause for the same amount of time on the other side. Then coming back to center when you're ready. Drawing the hands through to heart center. 
letting the hands come along the side and moving the feet to set up your mount. On an inhale, lift your arms up and overhead. Exhale, take that swan dive forward. Inhale, find that half lift. Exhale, release. Placing both hands on the mat, you're going to step back with the right foot and then the left foot, and you're going to find the plank here. Pausing in your plank, lowering the knees, coming onto the tops of the feet, and hugging the elbows in as you lower all the way down to the mat. As we change shapes again, hands underneath the shoulder heads, third eye is on the mat, you're pressing the tops of the feet into the floor, you're feeling your core left engage, exhaling all the air out, inhaling, lengthening the spine, lifting gently up, exhale, release, second time, exhaling all the air out, inhale, lift, Maybe a little weight in the hands this time. Exhale, release. Third time, cobra of your choice at your pace. Maybe adding a little bit more, maybe backing away. Pressing into the hands, coming up to either tabletop or plank, and meeting in down the look. A little movement of the spine here in our down dog. So coming up onto the toes, high up onto the toes. Spread all 10 toes nice and wide, let the toes grip the mat. Starting to bend the knee, bring the shins parallel to the floor. Press into those quads and then lift the hips up. And find down dog. Two more rounds here. If you want, you can add the little roll forward in two, adding a little bit more movement. Staying in your breath. After your third round, Pausing in down dog. From here, we're going to walk the hands back to the feet. And we're going to find that forward fold at the back of the mat. Here, we're going to take the opportunity, if it feels right, to lift up the feet and place the hands underneath the feet. See if you can draw the toes up to the wrists and let the feet massage the hands. While you're in that space, allowing maybe the crown of the head to start to reach towards the floor. Letting the tailbone start to reach for the ceiling. Pausing in stillness if you'd like. And then when you're ready to release the hands, go ahead and go there. Let's shake the hand now, letting the blood flow. Then trace the hands of the shins by that half left. Exhale, release. Placing both hands down on the mat. You're going to walk the hands out to lower the knees and find a table. From here, taking a cow and a cat. And then pausing in stillness here, you're gonna draw the left hip over towards the left side as you look over the left shoulder, lengthening that right side coming back to neutral, and then moving to the other side. So, 
drawing the left hip, our right hip to the right shoulder as you look over the right shoulder. Lengthening the left side. Coming back to center and then just taking another couple rounds of your pace here. You'll just notice what are the side bodies telling you? One side may feel more comfortable than the other, and that's okay. After your third round, you're just gonna swing the legs to either the right or the left, or cross it over the heels. You're coming down to see it. We're gonna take the rest of practice on our backs. Working our abs and core a little bit. So anything that you might need for Shavasana, try and grab onto it now. And recline down onto the mat as you're ready. Taking the opportunity as you come down onto the mat to get the back settled here. The feet are on the floor, the knees are facing up. So take the opportunity to Lift the pelvis up, an anterior, maybe a posterior tilt, finding that space that feels right. Kind of do the same with the shoulders. Relax the shoulder blades down. Come back to the breath, maybe placing the hands on the abdomen or the diaphragm. Just that space below the ribs, just noticing the breath. Where is it at right now? Then bringing the hands along the side of the body. Placing the palms on the mat. On an inhale, you're going to lift the hips up. Exhale, lower the hips down. Articulating the spine, you're going to do those two more rounds. Lift up and down with the breath. Pausing with the pelvis on the mat. We're going to add on to here. Remembering that first option is always available. So as we move on, if it doesn't feel right, just stay with that first option. So we're going to lift the left foot off the floor. We're going to put flexion in that foot. And then on an inhale, we're going to lift the pelvis up and pause for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Lower down. Bring the left foot to the floor. Remembering at any point in that 10 count, if it feels right to come down, go ahead and go. And then moving to the other side as you're ready, lifting that right leg up, pushing through that heel. Inhale, lift up for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Lower back down. Foot to the floor. Hug the knees into the chest. Then bringing both feet to the floor again, you're going to extend the left leg long on the mat. Toes are pointed up towards the ceiling, so you have that flexion in the foot. Then you're going to take the hands. And you're just going to place them in the small of your back or where the lumbar spine is. So your arms are kind of doing that figure for you. From here, bringing the chin to neutral, you're going to look right up at the ceiling. And you're going to find some spot directly above you that you can focus on. 
Then keeping your eyes on that spot, you're just gonna lift the head up about an inch off the mat. From here, if that feels really easy, you're gonna lift the elbows off the mat. Keep breathing. From here, if that all feels simple, you're gonna lift that left foot up. Remembering you're keeping the chin neutral. This is all core work. If you're feeling it in your neck, go ahead and press the tongue into the top of the mouth or the backs of the teeth to engage the front side of the neck. Pause. Feeling a shake, that's good. At any point, if it feels like you need to lower down, go ahead. And then we're gonna back it away. So heel down first, elbows down, head down. Bringing left foot to the floor. If it feels right to just gently rock the knees side to side before we go to the other side, you're welcome to. Now that you know where we're going, we have different bus stops here. So you find the bus stop that works best for you. And then reaching that right leg long on the mat to start. Drawing that awareness into that spot above your head again. Remember to keep the gaze there. The idea is not to lift the head more, it's to find that engagement, right? And hold there, okay? So as you're ready, you're just gonna lift the head up. It might only be an inch. Keeping the awareness there, feeling that core engagement. If you wanna add on, lift the elbows up. Then from here, if you want to add on lifting that foot up off the mat, you don't have to go far. Pushing through that heel, feel that core engagement. Remembering if you're feeling it in the back of the neck, that little technique to press the tongue into the top of the mat. Think about here that you are hugging into the spine from the side bodies. Keep breathing. Maybe noticing some subtle differences from your right and left side. Then as you're ready, mindfully reversing it. So if you have the heel up, lowering the heel down. If you have the elbows up, lowering the elbows down. Then bringing the head down. Bring the right foot to the floor and release the hands from underneath the small of the back. If you need to, just roll the shoulders here. Just that could have been really intense on the shoulders. Then hug the knees into the chest. We've done a lot of work on the spine today, and as you notice, the core and the oblique supporting the spine. What we haven't done it as a nice juicy twist. So we're going to take some time to explore that now. So from here, bringing the feet back to the floor. You can bring your arms either out to a T or cactus, or if it feels right, to bring the arms over the head, you're welcome to do that. We're gonna shift the hips a couple inches over to the right and just let the knees drift over to the left. From here, just finding the space that feels right for you and your spine. Settling in here. Making adjustments as needed as the body begins to open up. We're pausing with the head 
facing, you can look for that spot at the top of the ceiling again. And then after the next breath cycle, if it feels right and you feel subtle and you'd like to turn the head, you decide what direction you want to turn the head. For some of us, it will feel great to go to the opposite side, but for others, it might feel right to turn the chin towards the same direction as the knees. Letting yourself be the explorer this morning and listening to what your body needs. One more cycle of breath here. And then on an inhale, you're we're going to draw the gaze back up towards the ceiling first. Exhale it up. Inhale and drawing the knees back up to center. Exhale it up. And then inhale, bring the hips back to center, arms down along the side of the body. And just pause for a moment. Then as we get ready to move to the other side, deciding where you want the arms for this side, no right or wrong to this, lifting the hips up, just a little shift over to the left before you bring the knees over to the right. Remembering you can always use your props to rest the knees on. Remembering the goal that the twist isn't to get to the or the goal is to get the twist in the spine. Then after a few breaths, you're going to do the same thing here. Once you feel settled in, you're going to check in with the head, the neck. Where does it want to go? Maybe it wants to just stay neutral. Then if you made that movement with the head on the next inhale, you're going to come back to center. Pause. Inhale, knees back to center. Pause. And then inhale, hips back to center, hands along the side of the body. Just feeling in here for a moment. Before you take your shape for Shavasana, whether that be extending the legs long or maybe you'd like to come into a Baddha Konasana. Allowing yourself to settle in here to Shavasana. A little closed practice this morning in Shavasana. The most important pose of our practice. So allowing yourself the opportunity after we close class, if it feels right to stay in Shavasana for as long as you would like, taking in the benefits of your practice. I thank you all for the privilege of guiding you through your morning practice with our focus on the spine. I hope that through this practice, some awareness has come that allows you to take it off the mat, allowing you to have this beautiful, healthy spine. May you all be happy. May you be safe. We walk this earth always in loving kindness, at peace, and most important at ease. From my heart to all of your hearts. Namo Namaha. Namaste.